This leads us nicely onto the demo, which I'll go through in detail now so that when you see it running later, it'll make more sense. There are three components. It's based around the Raspberry Pi acting as a gateway and a hub for a number of sensors linked using LoRa radios. So LoRa is a low power, long range, industry standard radio technology used widely today in IoT. The green blocks are Multos components. They're the same physical chip with the same Multos operating system, but they run different apps in a different execution mode. So here we've got it in the sensors, and this is the trust core in the Raspberry Pi. And this is what the demo kit physically looks like. Now you can just see the uh, Lorem radio modules are attached using the SPI interface. And you can see the Multos trust anchor chip on its little breakout board. Um, it's important to note that really that the Multos chip needs no external components to operate. So it makes the de actual device a very simple thing to build. The Multos chip, a sensor module, uh, and a radio. If we go back to the beginning, trust calls first use when the Greengrass service starts. And that's to go through the mutual authentication process using the private key that it holds. Initially, there are no Lambda functions deployed. So from within AWS, you can deploy the set of Lambda functions you want um, to the Greengrass enabled device. So that's the Raspberry Pi in our demo. Again, this requires connection to the Greengrass service. So that's done by a mutual TLS again. The demo follows a three part pattern called extract transform load. There are three separate Lambda functions, one for each process. They run in parallel and at different intervals. There are lots of ways that Lambda functions can be triggered, but in this demo, we just use the simplest timer arrangement. Now, the first activity we're likely to see happening is the um, connection to the MQTT topic that the final data will be sent to. And this just uses a simple call from the AWS IoT SDK. The load function's job is to simply take messages from the output queue and post them. It looks at the queue every five seconds. The extract function on the other side um, just listens to the LoRa radio channels. It's checking every two seconds. And it saves any messages of the right size and with the right header to the input queue. The queue is organized according to an identifier in the clear header of the message, and that pertains to the key needed to decrypt the encrypted payload of the message coming from the sensor. In the demo, the queue is based on files, but there are other options out there depending on your needs and your architecture. So, it's important to point out here that the sensor unit uses Multos as the main MCE, interfacing to the sensor and the radio directly. The key and all the code needed for the sensor is stored securely in the tamper-proof environment of Multos. Encryption used is up to you, the designer, the, the sorry, to the designer. Although well, there is a standard LoRaWAN specification for operation with the Things Network. The Multos chip has hardware support for AES, triple DES, RS, RSA, elliptic curve, SHA and SHA2. The LoRa radio itself has no built-in encryption functionality at all. So the transform function is the part that pro actually performs the edge processing. And in the demo, this is a very, very simple thing that just calculates the maximum of all the data that's sitting in the queue uh, and builds a little JSON message to send out to uh, AWS IoT Core. In order to do that processing, it has to decrypt the messages in the input queue and optionally it can encrypt the output. To start with, we'll leave the output in the clear so you can see the content arriving in AWS and what it looks like. 
as we mentioned, the, um, the load function just posts the output to the MQTT topic. And on here, I have got terminal windows onto my Raspberry Pi. Uh, this window here is going to show us the, the log being generated by the PKCS11 layer. So this is essentially the calls being made to TrustCore. This bottom corner window is going to monitor the queue and tell us when files are created and deleted in the queue. So if I start the Greengrass service running now on the Raspberry Pi, watch. we can see in the top left hand window here, the calls being made to the um, TrustCore device. It takes a few moments to do this handshake. So the messages that are coming by are all related to the signatures. Okay, it's alive, that's good. So, and the initial connection's been made, the Lambda functions have now started and they're um, creating, so there's data coming in from the devices. Uh, there are three here, numbered one, two, and three, let's see. And in the trace here, you can see where the transform function is decrypting the data that's coming in from the sensors. So if we now switch over to um, the uh, control panel for AWS IoT, we'll connect to the MQTT topic. And we can see now, hopefully you can see the output that's coming through every 10 seconds. There we go. These are the messages. So this is just showing the maximum values that were read uh, and which sensors they were coming from. Now, to really throw the spanner in the works, we're going to try now and update the Lambda function. Now I've got already built a version of the Lambda function, version 11, which just sets a variable that turns on output encryption. So this will mean that the data arriving in the MQTT queue will no longer be read human readable. But the first thing we have to do is um, update the alias that tells our Greengrass device uh, which version to of the Lambda function to use. Okay, so we'll just update it to version 11. It's literally changing the word false to true in the source code. And then we need to deploy, just double check, that did update. Yeah, now need to deploy our group. So what's happening now is that it's building a package to send out to all of the Greengrass devices in this group. On the activity front here, you will see that um, the queue stopped. So that means the um, Lambda functions have stopped. And in the PKCS, PKCS11 log, it's now um, calling the functions used for authenticating. So it's going through the process of um, authenticating to the Greengrass service, downloading the new Lambda functions, and then ultimately it will be reconnecting. Takes a little while, but it's worth it if it all goes through. So 
So the status here is successfully completed. So what's happening now is that it's just restarting everything on the Pi and it's reconnecting to IoT core. Okay, and now we can see um, activity is starting again. The, um, so the Lambda function collecting data is working down here. And now in our log of functions, we can see the transform function decrypting the incoming messages, but also encrypting the outgoing messages. And if we go to the MQTT queue, the data coming through is now just hexadecimal encrypted values. 